there's something that people are not really informed about by the media uh, at the current time, but which is uh, very, very important in this crisis. And I made another video about it, but uh, I thought I'd make some more visual representation of the situation. What you see here is a pie chart of uh, the GDPs of the top 11 countries of the world. So that's uh, the GDPs of the US, that's the big uh, blue uh, part. Japan, Germany, China, UK, France, Italy, Spain, Canada, Brazil and Russia. Now a week ago at the G20, Mr. Gordon Brown was talking about the shadow banking system. The shadow banking system is a system that is a little bit off the books of the banks where they trade derivatives and uh, other yeah, derivatives is a broad group of credit default swaps, collateral collateralized debt obligations, etc. And if you add that derivative uh, volume to the pie chart that I show here, you get this picture. And there is the problem that we are all having today. The derivative pie, this part, is many times the GDP of the entire, well not the entire world of course, but of the top 11. This blue part is uh, 1100 something uh, uh, US dollars, uh, trillion, uh, so it's it's a quadrillion actually, 1.4, something like that, and uh, the combined GDP of the world is 50 trillion dollars, and of course it's a little bit more than this, maybe it's, it's like this, but it, it's about the proportions, the relative proportions. And of course, the blue part is not real money, it's all debt, it's all obligations, it's all, uh, well, it's the way like a car, uh, the way I can explain it, it's the car insurance, uh, people bought the car insurance for $10 per month, the, the insurance uh, pays out uh, for $20,000 for a new car, and now they all pretend that this uh, car insurance is actually uh, a, a, a dollar bill worth $20,000, because they all know that it's very likely to pay out. But just like with car insurance, when you have uh, a strange uh, event, let's say everybody decides on Monday to run into a tree with their cars, and they all go to claim uh, the insurance because they all would like to have a new car, then of course the insurance company uh, either goes bankrupt, that's the end of the story, uh, or it calls for something that is also uh, uh, possible right now, it calls force majeure. Force majeure is, for instance, when there's a hailstorm and all the buildings are destroyed or, or for everybody goes crazy and runs into a tree. Then the company can say, okay, we made this contract, contract with you, but uh, considering the, uh, uh, the circumstances, it makes no sense to, uh, to, uh, to enforce it or to, uh, to use it. And all these derivatives, this huge volume of derivatives are made under a contract, or most of them are made under a contract that has a force majeure clause which can be triggered by an act of state. Uh, so, for instance, if the US would pass a law, or if uh, Obama would write an executive order today saying that all derivatives uh, written in the US are no longer valid, valid or have to be renegotiated, or uh, go back to their, uh, I don't know, some, some kind of construction that is, uh, at least it does not uh, keep intact uh, the, the, the nominal value, let's say, the insurance value of these derivatives, that would be the end of the story. That would basically blow, blow this bubble uh, into smithereens or something. It would disappear. And you would be left with, again, with this. And of course, a large part of the blue GDP of the US is debt. Uh, but still, it would be a lot, lot less of a problem because every time uh, the US uh, would uh, write a bill out bill and, and, and give that money to the banking system, it would not disappear into this huge blue hole, but it would go into the real economy uh, where you and I uh, live and everybody else. So I would uh, like, uh, or um, I'm kind of shocked by this easiness by which uh, these things could be handled and I would like uh, people to uh, pressure their congress people or persons to make this law, this force majeure law.